Has the BYU football program forgotten their roots and have they gotten away from recruiting high school players in favor of the transfer portal? We're examining that on today's show. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome into Locked On Cougars. I'm Jay Catch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day, and thank you for being everydayers with us here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Very proud to be part of that network as your only original daily podcast focused on all things BYU sports. All right, let's dive right in on today's show. And I talked yesterday on the podcast how we were going to examine BYU's 2024 recruiting class more in full after BYU is getting closer to wrapping up things with the transfer portal. Will BYU truly ever be done working in the transfer portal this spring slash summer? I'm not 100% convinced of that because I think BYU still has anticipation of bringing in multiple bodies that can obviously hopefully supplement this roster, if not uh, bring guys who can make an impact for BYU as they enter the Big 12 Conference. Now, got an interesting comment, uh, a question that was submitted late yesterday. Uh, so I'm actually going to use it as part of the talking point of today's show. Uh, but he, the question came in, if I can find it right here, Tyler Holden, our good I, I am TJH says after listening to the podcast today, I was wondering if you think the coaching staff might be more focused on the recruiting transfer portal in the future than incoming freshmen. Now that's a great question, Tyler, because obviously if you were to just essentially go over the past mm, six months or so, I guess since the, since the season ended essentially and looked at how BYU went about recruiting, obviously they signed a pretty healthy recruiting class overall of high school talent, brought in a, a couple junior college, I think more than a couple of junior college guys. Uh, and then also bringing in transfer, portal talent but if you especially go back by this past uh, spring period the transfer portal has been a huge focus and obviously we've done we've done a lot of shows based on transfer portal news for BYU this spring but I can assure you based on a conversation I have with somebody down there inside the program at BYU is that BYU is not foregoing all of, of high school recruiting and going all in on the transfer portal uh, now there there's a cautionary tell out there I think it was Texas State if I recall correctly just I think it was two seasons ago they did not sign a single high school player they went either junior college or the transfer portal route and i think that coaching staff at texas state said you know what this is kind of a hell mary let's see if it works out and if it does maybe we can benefit from it i think they fell flat on their face and if i'm not mistaken texas state had a coaching change shortly after that happened that will not be the case for byu football honestly i i can assure you that byu will never completely move away from their high school recruiting base because they understand the value of having what they call program guys you cannot rely in this day and age of college football on just one way to garner or i guess collect talent into your football program you have to have guys who are going to come in from the high school ranks who are going to be the bedrock of your foundation of bedrock foundation of your football program and BYU will never get away from that. They will continue to make their home base, Utah, obviously, trying to bring as many Utah uh, prospects as possible. Now, I, we talked yesterday on the podcast, for those of you who are everydayers, about the Isaac Wilson commitment to the University of Utah and how much that truly impacts BYU. I think all indications for Isaac had been for months that Utah was going to be the pick. And I think BYU, as I said yesterday, all of their moves recently in terms of offers going out to 2024 and beyond for quarterbacks indicated I think they were anticipating such a move. Now, now, to, back to the conversation I had with this individual inside the BYU football program, they said that they will always try and strike a balance of making sure that, like I said, the foundation of their program are four and five year guys who are going to come in and be a part of the program and grow with the program and just essentially give their all for BYU. But you will also continue to supplement that when, for example, I, I've talked about this in the past. Gary Anderson, the former Utah State head coach, said on my radio station, the KSL Sports Zone, said that if you hit on one of three recruits, recruits in every recruiting cycle essentially if you you hit 333 in your recruiting class you're doing a good job you hit on two out of three you're going to be a fantastic program and heaven forbid you hit on all of them you will be contending for huge 
huge wins and special seasons. But he said that one out of three, if you hit on one of every three recruits, you've done a good job. That was his baseline for recruiting. So BYU obviously will be hoping to get two of hit hit on the two of three uh, type deal. But uh, if you can, so you've hit on one of every three, that means you need to supplement that roster. And that's where the junior college ranks and more importantly, the transfer portal come into play here for BYU. Uh, the conversation I had, I asked the question, okay, are you guys done in the transfer portal and we continue to pursue all options? I said, we will continue to evaluate all options, but we ov obviously do not want to upset the balance of what we have going on inside the program right now. Because you don't want to essentially go out and recruit every uh position on the transfer portal cycle and make your guys that have been in that program who came in via the high school route or junior college route, et cetera, make them think, hey, maybe I need to be uh, looking at my options if BYU is going to be bringing in this many guys. There's a, there's a fine, fine balance to strike if you're BYU with regards to what's going on. And is it always going to be a perfect science? No, it's not because it's recruiting. It, I've said this before on the podcast. It's a gamble. It, you're, you're projecting on every single one of these young men, hoping that they're going to pan out to the degree that you hope they pan out to be. When BYU brought Zach Wilson in, I, I can tell you that be, people inside the BYU football program thought he would eventually become an NFL quarterback. In fact, uh, Dylan Colley uh, said that uh, famous Idaho Potato Bowl game post game said that Zach Wilson will go down as one of the greats in BYU history. Just a year later, Zach Wilson was blowing up and ends up as the number two overall pick. I don't think BYU when they recruited Zach, who was a three star prospect, a mid three star prospect out of Corner Canyon High School, that he was going to come in and be the highest drafted player in BYU football history. But you know what? To Zach's credit, he capitalized on his opportunity and became one of the all-time greats, as Dylan proclaimed he would be. That's what BYU's got to continue to strive to look for, whether that's in the transfer portal, whether that's in the junior college ranks, or if it's a high school player or two that along the way that you find that become those stars. That is what you have. That's the balance you have to strike in this day and age of college football. No longer can you rely on just essentially one bucket uh, to draw from to fill your bucket. Speaking of your roster composition, you've got to draw from all these different buckets and it's, it, it's a tough gig. And that's why BYU is beefed up their back end of their staff with regards to their recruiting uh, staff. They have uh, always had a, a number of student part-time employees helping them, but then I have Justin Anderson in there leading the way on the recruiting side of things. Patrick Hickman is working uh, with the person else side of things. Hopefully I didn't get those two mixed up, but nonetheless, they are focused on this day in and day out. BYU assistant coaches obviously have a huge role to play in this, and BYU has a number of analysts as well who will obviously, uh, if the NCAA rules continue to fluctuate and change, they will be given an opportunity to continue to recruit. So BYU is doing their absolute darndest to build this roster as best they possibly can, and uh, I've got to say, just looking at the way the roster is constructed right now, I'm fairly impressed. In a, in a fairly short period, uh, I guess relative uh, to how BYU's had time to get ready to truly prepare for the Big 12 Conference, I think that this roster is going to surprise some folks. I, I saw a thing on three sports yesterday, had uh, some projections of teams that were, uh, the, the win totals uh, were too high, were just right, or were too low in the Big 12, and BYU was in the bunch. They thought at five and a half was too high for BYU. I don't think that's out of the question. I've said that the baseline for success for me for BYU this fall is to get to six wins. You get to bowl eligibility. Anything beyond that is just gravy or icing on top of what would be a fun first season in the Big 12. I think six wins would indicate BYU has been a, a team that's been pretty competitive, all things considered, year one in the Big 12. And that would pretend, hopefully, for BYU to have more positive years down the line. The other thing about this is just, re just rem remember this. The Big 12 is losing both Texas and Oklahoma. So the quote-unquote heavy hitters are exiting the, the conference just when BYU is coming in. There is going to be a void at the top of the Big 12 that – any one of the teams in the conference, the 12 teams that will be a part of the Big 12 conference moving forward for the time being, any one of them have to be thinking, if we if we do it right, we could become that dominant force in the conference, and you could do it in a fairly short uh, period if you're able to capitalize on it. Am I saying that BYU is poised to do just that? No, they are going to have to put in the work. They're going to have to have the ball bounce their way in certain circumstances. They're going to have to notch some upsets along the way as well while continuing to uh, build the roster depth that is necessary to be one of those top teams. 
but you've got to have that aspiration going into the Big 12 Conference. That opportunity exists for BYU. So I, I look at this, and to answer, I hope I answered your question, uh, Tyler. Don't I think the BYU is essentially ignoring the high school ranks in terms of the transfer portal stuff? Because I think some people may think that. Currently, BYU only has, according to 24-7 sports, four hard commits for the 2024 recruiting class. C.O. Sefa Brown from Highland High School, Dellen Johnson, who's been a longtime commit out of Springville High School, Chance Harrison out of Rio Mesa in Oxnard, California, and then Adney Reed most recently of Spanish Fork High School. Uh, and those are the four commits that BYU has right now via the high school ranks. They have thrown out a number of offers during the spring to the high school level. I know that the transfer portal has taken a lot of the headlines away from that, but do not think for a second that BYU has essentially ignored uh, their duties with regards to going out and recruiting high school talent in favor of the transfer portal. They're trying to strike a, a balance and obviously, like I said, draw from the multiple buckets that can build up a roster. And I think the way they've gone about it has been pretty Awesome. Frankly, I really like the way they've gone about it. They have supplemented in a lot of different spots. There are still spots that need to supplement. I did a short uh, last night, uh, speaking of Thursday night, talking about the 100-day mark uh, counting down to BYU football. We're now just 99 days away today uh, when you're listening to this on a Friday. Uh, but I talked about the fact that BYU needs to find an option in the kicking game. Maybe it is Matthias. Dunn. Maybe he is going to be the guy for BYU this fall. But uh, there are still options out there on the table for BYU. And one thing that I think that they can continue to lean into is a new addition to the kind of the the camp season, if you want to call it, during the spring and summer period that BYU is going to be a part of. And they're calling them post-grad camps. What is it? How can it help BYU? We'll discuss all of that coming up in just a moment. Now, first, a word on our friends over at Bird Dogs. I've talked about this a lot. The Bird Dogs are absolutely awesome. They're incredibly comfortable. They stretch with you. They flex with you. The best part is that there was a question our good friend Shorts all year asked it on uh, YouTube yesterday. Are they long enough? Well, the best part is Bird Dogs lets you customize how long you want the shorts to be. I'm a guy who is not capable of wearing a five-inch inseam. It just is not my thing. You don't want to see my hairy legs uh, with that much skin showing, but they have multiple uh, seam lengths, or I guess what well, inseam lengths is what I'm trying to say. I think there are five, seven, and nine inch options out there. So you can customize it to what you're looking for. The, the better part about all of this is bird dogs are absolutely awesome. And right now, if you go to their website, birddogs.com slash locked on call, you can see the web, the web address in the lower part of our YouTube video. They're going to send you one of these cool bird dogs, Yeti style tumblers. If you use the promo code locked on college, it's a free gift from our friends at bird dogs. Uh, I'll tell you what, I am absolutely loving the bird dogs shorts that they sent me. I would encourage you guys to give them a shot. And if shorts are not your thing they have more pants options than shorts i'm fairly certain so it's a great great product you got a number of celebrity endorsers out there across the country who are endorsing them and of course i'm endorsing them here on locked on cougars once again stop by uh, birddogs.com slash locked on college use that promo code locked on college to get that free tumbler from our friends over at bird dogs once again that's birddogs.com slash locked on college to get started today Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Thank you for being everydayers with us here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Uh, Monday, it's going to be Memorial Day. Still determining how exactly I'm going to approach it with the holiday. I, I may actually record the day of. I usually typically, most of you know this, I record the night before for a lot of these podcasts or the day before. Uh, still trying to figure out some holiday plans. So we will have an, a, a something for you on Monday. Trust me. For those of you who are celebrating the holiday, I know a number of us, yours truly included, have it off from our day jobs. But we'll have you covered. We'll, we'll make sure you're taking care of it. Also, one other thing. I'm going to start doing some of these shorts. I've done a number of them talking about some of the transfer portal editions. We're going to count down to the season. So today is day number 99. You'll see a short coming out at some point here on a Friday. Uh, and obviously we'll go by the roster for BYU that they put out. Now there are no, uh, if there's a player or players that don't have that number corresponding on the BYU roster, I'm going to essentially insert a player who is, I'm expecting to be a part of the roster. It may not actually be their number, but it's just part, all part of the countdown. So stick to, stay tuned to those on shorts. You'll also see them on social media, Instagram, Facebook, all that type of stuff. Locked on Cougars, uh, Twitter as well. You'll be able to see all that stuff. So uh, looking forward to that. Now, I promise we talk a little bit about what post-grad camps are. And BYU announced they're going to have two of these coming up in the next few weeks. This is going to be an interesting thing for BYU. Uh, what it is, is they're going to uh, look at all options with regards to finishing uh, building their roster. And this post-grad camp is going to give an opportunity. It's a transfer portal camp that is going to allow uh, high school graduates 
two-year uh, transfer op- 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 uh, options, uh, players, as well as four-year transfer players to come and work out for BYU coaches as well as other coaches that are going to be in attendance at this camp. It is an opportunity. It's actually more in these pl- uh, players' favor in many respects than the coaches' favor because you come in, it's $50 per session. You will compete against other uh, graduate players, including two- and four-year transfers, to show what you're capable of doing. This is going to give players who feel like, okay, I went in the transfer portal. Maybe it's not worked out. I haven't landed with a program I, I've been looking, or maybe I haven't just been given the option I am most interested in. This gives you a bigger opportunity to show yourself. If you if you think BYU might be an option for this player, speaking of, I'm just speaking from a player's perspective, you can go get in front of these coaches and show what you're capable of doing. But it's just it's another opportunity for BYU to evaluate talent with their very with their very own eyes. That's the most important thing. This will be taking place in Provo. Uh, other programs like Colorado and Nebraska have announced uh, similar type deals to this. So this has uh, become part of the, the calculus or part of the calendar, I should say, with regards to the summer uh, transfer portal cycle is what you can expect it to be. Uh, the first one will be coming up June 5th through the 7th, and the other one will be June 12th through the 14th. Once again, it's $50 per session, and it gives athletes eligible to compete. Our post-high school graduate players maybe haven't gotten the opportunity uh, in terms of their post-high school aspirations. They can also have two-year transfers and four-year transfers, so that's junior college players, transfer portal prospects. It is a great opportunity to showcase these young men, but also give BYU an opportunity to maybe find a quote unquote diamond in the rough in one of these workouts, get them on the roster. And who knows, going back to our previous conversation today, who knows if that player could be an impact guy for the BYU football program. And that that's, I think this is the way to approach it. BYU needs to essentially chase any and all opportunities within the bounds of the rules established by the NCAA to find options for them to bolster the roster. Now, let me also add another tidbit here with regards to the transfer portal. It was actually not transfer portal. It's recruiting related. Uh, Ray Paula, we talked a little bit about him on yesterday's podcast. Uh, he is coming to BYU by way of the junior college route, played at Allen Hancock College down there in uh, California. I uh, had a conversation with somebody who told me that they believe Ray Paulo is actually going to impress a lot of folks because they feel like they, uh, they, they've they stumbled upon a guy they feel like can be a real head knocker. And what I mean by that is he is a guy who's going to absolutely get after it in the blocking. And that's one thing that BYU is very impressed by when they were evaluating him coming out of the junior college ranks. So he's a guy that uh, he's six foot three, 255 pounds. If you look at his film, he's built like a battering ram and that should lend himself lend itself to him coming in and hopefully being a bigger option than I think many of us might be expecting. That's what the, like I said, the conversation I had with this individual said, do not discount him playing this year, Jake. This is not just a guy coming in to fill a roster spot. He is a guy BYU fully expects to compete for playing time in that tight end unit. Now, obviously you've got guys like Isaac Rex and Ethan Erickson who are more of your traditional true tight ends. 6'6", 6'5", 240 pounds, can run, catch, they can block to a degree as well. But then you also on BYU's roster have guys like Mason Wake, who Mason is a battering ram in his own right. He would started out as a fullback. He's six foot one, 250, 260 pounds. And uh, as much as he is, uh, he loves to jump over dudes. He is just as apt putting his head in there and absolutely just mauling dudes in the run game. I think a guy like Ray Paulo, based on the conversation I had, is going to strike a nice balance between the two. Can he take some of the pressure off a guy like Isaac Rex or Ethan Erickson in the run game and free them up to be a little more of a pass catcher? That is the hope. So he may see not necessarily all the reps as that pass catching tight end, but he could come in in certain circumstances and really help BYU as a inline tight end who is going to just essentially just maul people in the run game. That's one thing that BYU values highly from all of their tight ends, but you need a guy like that who's willing to get after it. And based on uh, what I, I what I'm hearing about Ray Paulo, get excited uh, to see what he can do in that respect. And also, do not discount the fact that he's got pretty good hands. He had 379 yards and four touchdowns last year at the junior college rank, so he can contribute in the passing game. But his calling card is going to be more of the guy who can take some of the pressure off an Isaac Rex, who may not uh, necessarily have to block as much as he's had to in the past, and give maybe keep him a little bit fresher because we all know when Isaac is. At at his absolute best. He is a fantastic 
pass catching tight end, but he's also shown an ability to block. But if you can take, take some of that stress off of him, I think that's what a guy like Ray Paulo brings to the BYU football program. And it should be exciting uh, to see where that ultimately all shakes out for him. But I'm looking forward to seeing him on the football field because uh, early returns, early word out of BYU is they're very excited to have him on the roster because frankly, I didn't know much of anything. Oh, no, I didn't know much of anything. I didn't know anything about this dude until I saw that he signed. I started, I started to dig into it, talk to people. That's when I really learned that BYU is very high on his ability. And like I said, do not discount the 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 chance that he could see the field this season for BYU. It, sound, it sounds like outlandish in a way, but uh, people who told me that, I, I trust them far more than I trust my personal opinion on such things. All right, coming up here in just a minute, uh, we'll catch up on some of the other news out there in BYU sports. A former BYU Cougar will be returning to face his former program in BYU's home opener in the Big 12 era. Also, we got to finish up the 2016 season and our look back at all 155 independent era football games for BYU. We're talking about the Wyoming Cowboys down there in San Diego. You guys might remember that one. We'll get to all of that here momentarily. First, a word on our friends over at... Uh, <laughs> over at Perry Homes. Of course, we've been talking about Perry Homes for a few months now. The best part is whether you're just starting out, if you're looking to build your first home or if you're trying to build your dream home, Perry Homes has got the options for you, my friends. For 50 years, Perry Homes has been Utah's premier home builder with communities throughout the state. They have communities, home designs, and price points across the board to help meet your needs as a prospective home buyer slash home builder. That's what I love about it. they got beautiful communities in Davis, Salt Lake, Tooele, and Utah counties to help you guys find the perfect place for you that where you want to be situated. They also have multiple communities in Washington County near St. George. If you want to live down there in Red Rock territory, they offer over 50 unique home designs from Ramblers to two stories to townhomes and everything in between to fit your needs as well. And they're offering generous financing incentives to their preferred lender right now as well. So get started today. Uh, reach out to our friends, visit PerryHomesUtah.com to see what's new in Utah's finest neighborhoods. When you talk to them, make sure to mention the locked on Cougar sent you. Uh, once again, that's PerryHomesUtah.com to learn more. Now for 50 years, Utah has been coming home to Perry homes. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars a part of your routine, my friends. If you have not done so already, one of my oft-repeated phrases here on the show, please subscribe, rate, review, like the show, share the show, put it on your uh, own personal uh, social media feeds. Get the word out about Locked On Cougars. We have reached 3,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is not insignificant. I, I, I will readily admit that. We have thousands more who listen to us in the regular podcast form. Cannot thank you guys enough for your support, but continue to help us build this audience. We are seeing phenomenal growth and uh, really, really been uh, gratifying for all the support you guys have shown. Honestly, uh, it, it's, it's it's easy to do what I do on this podcast when I notice that you guys like it. The comments you guys share, your reaction to it, even if you disagree with me. I enjoy all of the banter back and forth. I read every single comment sincerely. I read every single one that comes in via social media, our YouTube comments, uh, the YouTube, uh, not the YouTube, the Apple uh, podcast feed type stuff. Apple, or I guess reviews, I should say, on Apple Podcasts. Uh, you guys, you guys are phenomenal. So thank you for the support. And hopefully you guys will stick with us throughout the offseason, obviously getting ready 99 days away as BYU takes on the Sam Houston State Bearcats. All right. One former Cougar who will be coming back to BYU, it appears, is George Udo. Announced yesterday he's committed to Cincinnati. He had previously committed to Charlotte, uh, the 49ers, but got a Power 5 offer from the Cincinnati Bearcats. And he will be returning to BYU if he is healthy, obviously. September 29th, when BYU you takes on the Cincinnati Bearcats. Now, do not discount the fact that Cincinnati may be doing this because George Udo just went through spring ball with BYU and has at least a baseline knowledge of what Jay Hill is trying to implement on defense. That can be very advantageous for a program like Cincinnati and coach uh, Scott Satterfield as he tries to uh, get Cincinnati off to a good start in the Big 12 era on their own uh, side of things. But it was a very interesting thing to see George Udo getting that opportunity with the Cincinnati Bearcats. And I'm uh, looking forward to seeing uh, George back at Lavelle Edwards Stadium, uh, not too far away. It's crazy. It's September 29th is when BYU and Cincinnati will square off on a Friday night uh, just before LDS General Conference or the General Conference for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, that'll be on Saturday and Sunday following that, but uh, expect to see uh, George Udo himself back in, a B, back in BYU uh, territory, albeit wearing an opposing team's uniform. Now, other notes real quick is BYU men's golf had a really, really rough third round yesterday, 23 over as a team. Uh, we'll see how the Greyhawk uh, Golf Club, the, the NCAA championships are being held out for men's golf, uh, treat the other teams in the actual first round action today. But that 23 over, 
Ooh, that that was a bad start. BYU got a bad start last year on that. They obviously play their third round because it's on a Sunday typically uh, on uh, uh, me, Thursday ahead of the first round starting on Friday in the championships. The last time that happened, BYU got 10 over. Uh, the last time they, they did this, 23 over. Man, that ew. I don't want to say they can't uh, make up for it, but they're going to have their work cut out for them if they want to advance in the NCAA championships. That was just not the way you wanted to go about it. And hopefully they can rebound, but we'll have an update for you guys on Monday on how all things went on that front. Also, BYU men's women's track and field, the 11th ranked uh, BYU men's team. Uh, the women's team also ranked, uh, let's see, they're the ranked number 20. Uh, speaking of the women's team, they are taking part in the NCAA West preliminaries uh, out in Sacramento, California. Number of athletes obviously trying to punch their ticket to the NCAA championships in their own right we'll have a full recap of play of athletes and how they did in their individual events for you on monday as well but a lot going on this weekend with regards to that you can check it out espn plus has got a ton of coverage from there in sacramento if you want to check that out uh but there have been a number of byu athletes the men's team ranked number 11 in the country they got an opportunity to make some noise nationally this year they have i think the third most uh qualified athletes of all programs across the country so Really good stuff for the men's and women's track and field programs, and hopefully they can have a good showing out there at the West preliminaries and punch their tickets in mass uh, to the NCAA championships. All right, final thing on today's show is we finish up the 2016 season. We've been going through game by game of all of BYU's independent era football games. We've done this since the season ended. We actually started in early January, uh, counting this down. We are now at the end, tail end of the 2016 season. Uh, Kalani Satake's first uh, uh, foray as BYU's head coach, and BYU punched their ticket uh, to the San Diego County Credit Union Poinsettia Bowl for the second time in their independent era, and BYU was facing off against the Wyoming Cowboys. Now, BYU and Wyoming had not played uh, since BYU left uh, the Mountain West Conference to go independent back in 2011, and uh, Wyoming was, was one of those programs that BYU had a fairly interesting history with. You all know about the Black 14 uh, situation way, way back when, but BYU and Wyoming, Wyoming fans love to bag on BYU. I can vividly remember I was at a um, Wyoming BYU game in Provo when I heard maybe the most vile string of vulgarities come out of a Wyoming Cowboys uh, fan's mouth after a, a play that he deemed uh, was not in favor of his team, but crazy stuff. There's the uh, stories of Cowboy fans throwing urine bombs on players, peeing over the, the railing at War Memorial Stadium up there in Laramie on to BYU players entering the locker room or leaving the locker room. Crazy. Crazy history for BYU and Wyoming, but they re, they reunited uh, for a game in this poinsettia bowl. Tanner Mangan was the starting quarterback for BYU after uh, Taysom Hill had suffered a dislocated elbow in that regular season finale win over Utah State. Came into this game, but uh, the the conditions in this game, if you guys will recall, were less than favorable. Rainy. This was like atypical San Diego weather. Uh, just rainy, miserable weather, and BYU struggled in this game. Tanner Mangum uh, completed just eight of fifteen passes for ninety six yards did have a touchdown pass against one interception josh allen the future buffalo bill we all know about this if i, if I recall correctly uh was this his final game in a, in a wyoming uniform might have been hits he was 17 of 32 for 207 yards two touchdowns and two interceptions of his own but jamal williams he was the star of the night when byu needed a big play jamal did it in this game he tallied 26 carries 210 yards and a touchdown on the ground tender mangum also had a a rushing touchdown. If you recall, he had that big stretch. He, he just barely got it over the goal line, a uh, full stretch to get that touchdown. But BYU ends up getting the win 24 to 21 as they rally uh, to, to actually be the, the end of winning this game, 24 to 21 to cap their season at nine and four overall. Uh, BYU had a really, really tough time with the conditions as did Wyoming, obviously, but BYU gets out of there with the win and caps their season at nine and four. And that nine and four is one of the seasons that you will forever look at at 2016 and say, okay, all four of those losses were by less than a combined 10 points. You turn a couple of those alone around and you're 11 and two and who knows where you stand in that season. But it was a great debut season, obviously for Kalani Satake, uh, Jamal Williams, Taysom Hill were going out the door. They obviously led the way for BYU the entire year. A little bit of a rebuilding effort, but uh, BYU coming out of the 2016 season uh, was very adamant that Tanner Mangum was their starting quarterback. But we're going to talk about maybe the most difficult season in the past 50 plus years of BYU 
football. Uh, when we start on Monday, looking back at the 2017 season, that had a pretty uh, auspicious start, if you will recall. Uh, it was actually one of the earliest starts in BYU football history up against the Portland State Vikings, and we'll talk about that on our Monday edition of Locked on Cougars. So that's going to do it for today's edition of the show. Hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. You guys are absolutely awesome. I cannot thank you guys enough for your support of this venture, as always. Once again, thank you for making us your first listen today, and thank you to all of you, the thousands of you, truthfully, who are everydayers with us here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Uh, enjoy your Memorial Day holiday. Grill something good. Enjoy time with your family and friends. Obviously, uh, pay homage uh, to those who have fallen uh, in the defense of our country here in the United States of America and beyond. But nonetheless, enjoy your uh, unofficial kickoff to summer, and we'll reconvene on our Monday edition of Locked On Cougars. Until then, once again, have a great weekend. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast. See ya.